<laughs> Damn, this is too dark. All right, so today we're going to go over the uh, Dorian Yates uh, Blood and Guts. So Dorian Yates was, as any of you should know by now, um, he used a high-intensity training, lower volume, higher intensity, lower frequency approach to training. And uh, was one of the biggest and most successful bodybuilders of all time. So when people say, you know, no bodybuilder has ever used high intensity training. Well, I think they're forgetting about Dorian Yates. <laughs> because Dorian Yates, Dorian Yates changed the level of mass required by bodybuilders. Um, so Dorian Yates came in so friggin' big after doing high intensity training and switching that he outweighed people by she's probably like 30, 40 pounds and they just couldn't compete. So he is the reason Dorian Yates is pretty much the reason why bodybuilders are so big now because Dorian Yates came in so big that it was just a different level. And it was the high intensity training approach that he learned from Arthur Jones and Mike Menser that allowed him to get so big, he believes. So you'll, uh, <clears throat> if you watch Dorian Yates videos on YouTube, he's saying all the same shit I'm saying, <laughs> believe it or not. Um, Dorian Yates, he practiced this, you know, back in the nineties, early two thousands, maybe. So we've refined this approach since, but he adheres to the, the following principles. Train as hard as you can. Don't overtrain by adjusting your volume and frequency to match the intensity. And Dorian Yates used very basic movements to build such a ridiculous physique. So when you see these YouTube guys or these other bodybuilders saying you need to do this biceps curl, that biceps curl, hit the chest from every angle, which is impossible because <laughs> your body's capable of literally an infinite number of angles. Um, Dorian Yates didn't do any of this shit. What he did was basic movements really hard. He didn't focus on working one head of the triceps or one head of the biceps. He didn't do any of that shit. He just did basic movements, very, very high intensity. And as a result, he built one of the biggest, most muscular physiques that bodybuilding has ever seen. Beat Ronnie Coleman many times. Ronnie Coleman eventually, um, you know, got his steroid cycle in check. And after a couple of years, <laughs> got as big as Dorian Yates, maybe even a little bigger. And uh, ended up winning. But so we're going to look uh, at Dorian Yates' blood and guts training. And I'm going to tell you what's correct about it, what's incorrect about it. But if most of you simply just followed this, you would see tremendously better results than your current training program. The only problems with Dorian Yates' uh, approach to training is, first of all, the frequency 
might be a little high for most people. But keep in mind, Dorian Yates was on a lot of anabolic steroids, so he could recover a lot faster than the average individual. Also, I'm not crazy about the repetition cadence and the form. Um, as time went on since the 90s and early 2000s, we started to learn more that slightly slower repetition cadences are way safer and just as effective. Uh, Dorian Yates didn't know this um, back in the day. And he's got a torn biceps tendon and a torn triceps tendon as a result of it. So, you know, we've learned we've we've learned uh, some things since then. And basically, my approach to high intensity training is a more refined version of this. You know, just like the internal combustion engine has evolved and refined over time, it's still the basic principles of an internal combustion engine. It's just gotten better. It's improved. So my approach to high intensity training is just an improved version of high intensity training based on new research, new science, just like the modern internal combustion engine is an improved version of the Ford Model T with um, new science and new research. I'm just going to get to the point in the video where let's see let's see when he starts with chest all right gonna share we're gonna go over what is good about it and what isn't so good about it but even if you did it like this, you'd see way better results um, than with your current program if you're not doing high intensity training. I'm on ice and music. I'm on ice, keep it on. So the thing I liked about Dorian Yates is that he didn't do any of this glamour and glitz bullshit oh, the bodybuilders did. He was in this dirty gym, hammer strength equipment, barbells, Nautilus equipment. So the first thing you'll notice, he's moving too fast. Um, he could have slowed this down to a three to five second negative and a three to five second positive, and very likely would not have torn his triceps um, or resulted in, you know, or created any in injury. Not that moving this fast won't work. Of course it will. It's just you have increased force production. And that force is going to transfer to connective tissue. And there's a limit to how much force connective tissue can tolerate before it fails and it breaks. So Dorian could have, you know, avoided injury if he just slowed it down a little bit. Not that this doesn't work. It's just nowadays, since we know more about injuries and force production and stuff like that, uh, thanks to Ken Hutchins, mostly. Uh, Ken Hutchins, uh, if you want to look up some of his his literature, some of his books, um, brilliant fucking genius. Uh, he was an engineer by trade, um, exercise scientist, hobbyist, really, and wrote a bunch of books on force and all these other things. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, Dorian Yates didn't know that back then. Had he known, he probably would have protected himself. But again, not saying it doesn't work. It's just a less safe option. So, is it? so I'm guessing this okay. is... So Dorian Yates would normally do one or two kind of warm-up sets, kind of practice sets, and then one set to failure. So these sets, they're not challenging his muscle. Um, you know, why he did the warm-up sets, it could have been purely psychological. Do you need these warm-up sets? Well, before this, he actually did an incline bench press, two warm-up sets and one set to failure literally exactly like the DeLorean Watkins protocol. <laughs> um, but um, probably purely psychological. They're, they're not needed. They're not necessary, especially if you've done, you know, if you did the uh, bench press beforehand, you're warm. <laughs> you've got plenty of uh, blood volume, plenty of your, your nervous system is running hot at that point. Uh, your blood vessels are dilated. Everything's good to go. Your cardiovascular system 
is is running higher, more uh, higher heart rate. Everything required um, to push yourself hard is good by this point. But he does a couple of practice sets anyway. There's nothing wrong with a practice set. If you want to do one, do one. As long as the intensity is low. As you notice that what he did, it wasn't very challenging. He just kind of felt, felt the machine out. Now he's going to crush it. Now this is a set to failure. I believe. Otherwise, this guy would be spotting it. Let's go, guys, go. Drive. Yeah. strike killing himself. So that's when most people would stop. He goes, 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 goes. Right? He's going to go again. Here, and he's going again. Look at that. That's high intensity. Ready? And again. Boom. Hold that. So he, he even did a set extender. He had his training partner lift it up to help him on the way down. So you want to be training that hard. Most of you guys are stopping. So he did three reps after the point most people would stop. Just because the weight's not moving doesn't mean you're necessarily done. You don't just set it down right away. You can do negative time static attraction. Drive. Luck. Negatives. Negatives. One more. Slow. Pretty fucking strong to be able to lift three, <laughs> three plates like that. I loved his approach to training. Just old, dirty, dark gym. That's the type of gym I grew up in. The type of gym I grew up in, you're basically breathing asbestos in the whole fucking time. Dust ever. It was gross, but it was awesome. The gyms now are just, oh my God. I saw a lady doing a fucking handstand. You know, one of those big cage-like things, functional training cages where you can do chin-ups on it. She was on top of the fucking thing, like it's a jungle gym, doing handstands on it. Fitness culture is fucked. So as you can see with the, the, the hammer strength chest press, he did one kind of practice set. Then he just went in one set to failure. Yeah. Okay. Let's see it. Now he's going to do some some flies, some incline flies to hit the clavic clavicular head. This is not a good exercise um, because you're getting most of the load at the bottom here when your muscles in passive insufficiency, and you're really not going to get too good of a result from that. You're going to want to do this with flies, and you're getting decreasing load towards the top since the length of the moment arm is reducing exactly. towards the contracted position. You actually want more resistance in the contracted position. But with that exercise, you're literally getting none. It's a very traditional bodybuilding exercise, but it fucking sucks. Let's be real. Honestly, you want to do it with a pec deck or a fly or something. So I'm just going to skip over this one. I don't know. Oh, here we go. So now he's going to do a fly with cables. After this crazy son of a bitch goes. So, you know, even for high intensity training, I mean, by today's standards, that's a little high. Uh, the amount of volume he's doing. He's the, he did an incline bench press, hammer strength, chest press, incline fly. Now he's going to do kind of like a decline chest fly. This is Dorian Yates. This is Dorian Yates on anabolic steroids. If you guys are doing this many chest exercises with that level of intensity, you will fucking overtrain. Don't believe me? Try it. And if you can tolerate this many exercises without overtraining, then you're not training hard enough. So it's probably not a good idea to copy exactly what he's doing. His volume would be a little high. Um, you're going to run yourself into the dirt if you're training hard this way. Um, but still, significantly less volume than the entire rest of the bodybuilding um, community at that point. He was doing way less. Oh, yeah, squeeze at me. Go on. Oh. Oh. Yeah, so I'm strong, fish. Squeeze at me. You know, a little fast. Oh, That's probably why go. he got injured. I would Bring think it. almost large. He's just going right to a set to failure here. One set. One Let's set to failure. Come on. Here we go. Come on, again. Are you doing this, guys? Are you pushing this fucking hard? I don't think so. That's it. 
Kind of size them. One set to failure. So <laughs> you do it like that, a little slower. You want to do it a little slower, a little safer. You turn like that, all you're going to need is one set. Dorian Yates, most of his exercises, if you notice, he did one set. If it was kind of like, if it was a more complicated movement, like a dumbbell fly, you know, he kind of did a practice set first and then the set to failure, which is fine. You don't need it. Um, but if you want to, it's not going to really be disadvantageous. But as you can see, one working set to failure. All right, now what's he doing? I think he's doing overhead press now. He's doing, he must be doing chest with the shoulders. Oh, size of this fucking guy. Jesus Christ. He is, you know, he's, if he's not one of your favorite bodybuilders of all time, the great thing, they used to call him the shadow because he used to just kind of hide for the entire year and then come out with this nasty fucking physique. That's why I like him. No fucking around. No bullshit. One of these days I gotta figure out a way to train with this guy. On his back. Sheesh. All right, now what's he doing here? Yeah. He's gonna do. Oh, he's doing biceps curls. A little fast on the way up. I would slow it down. Obviously, he's kind of swinging it. But that's the thing. As long as you train intensely to failure, whether you go slow or fast, the result is gonna be the same. It's just you're probably gonna get hurt really fast, which is good. Oh, man. Come on, man. Right, now here's his working set to failure. As you can tell, he does choose to do like a practice set beforehand. So this will be his working set to failure. You can tell the first set just kind of got his head in the game. It's probably psychological, if anything. Come on, That's good. This one he's just going to kill himself. Business as usual, man. Business as usual, eh? You really don't want to be like arching your back and stuff. Oh shit! Look at the intensity. Ooh! Now he's going in the barrel with assisted rep. Wow! <laughs> and just finish one off. Stretching probably not a good idea in between sets. Um, Come on, Mr. Yates. So there you go. We did a practice set and a set to failure. Oh, the magazines. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Yes. Well, it's a contraction. Still a little quick, though. I would not do it this quick. Nice and tight. All right, so that's his practice set. He's crushing his partner here. Really got 50. Is that 35 and 25 in each side? 70, 50, 130. They're currently 140 pounds. <laughs> Fucking crazy, these guys. <laughs> Spits on the ground. <laughs> Dude, this is what bodybuilding should be. None of this fucking fruity shit. Short shorts and fucking... Jack Harlow haircuts. Yeah. Ugh. Man, he's got oh, yeah. 50 pounds. 70, 50, 50. He's doing 150 pounds. Today. Fucking crazy. This is such a failure. Ah. I, bet they, I bet they do a couple of negatives. There we go. Are you training that hard? Nope. There you go. That was. That's a good training partner right there. What a perfect assisted rep. Um, if, you, if you have a training partner and you want him to, you know, do four reps or assisted reps with you, that's how you do it. Notice how he gave him just enough, just enough, just enough till he got to the tr contracted position and then lowered it. So he had a good training partner. I'm going to look for any questions. We'll take a break. Um, if you guys have any questions about this. So, again, obviously the intensity is sick. The workout is sick. He's going a little quick. Um, he's changing direction more quickly than you should if you want to optimize safety. Um, 
The negative is okay, but it could be a little slower. He's doing a lot of range of motion, but we know now that you don't really need all that much range of motion. So, but for his time, yep. I would love Dorian Yates to take Michael Hearn through a fucking workout, make him cry. All right, let's see. Anyone have. Yeah, yoga. It's a religious practice, but Westerners think it's just stretching. Well, Westerners, so yoga, if you do, you guys should do some research on how yoga started. Yoga was a spiritual practice for fucking thousands of years. Um, a religious, spiritual, meditative practice. Hollywood turned it into a fitness class in order to monetize it. That's where yoga comes from. Do you think he was natural or used PED? Come on, dude. Every professional bodybuilder used and uses drugs. You can't, like, how could you guys possibly think that a physique like this is attainable without him? Jay, greetings from NYC, but all your stuff, really great. Oh, by the way, guys, I'm still doing the home workout for free if you purchase the Golden Era system. I recently uploaded a full workout with commentary start to finish on the Golden Era system. So you guys can watch that and kind of get a, a feel for the foundation of your training. Uh, let's see. Work as a diesel mechanic at a very busy shop. I do a lot of lifting and I'm also pulling heavy things in a weird position all day. Should I worry about the extra volume at my job? Yeah, no, you should. In the beginning, um, yeah, you, you're probably going to benefit from lower frequency, lower volume training if you're putting that kind of a beating on your body every day. All right. Oh, here's a good question. Mike Menser prefers a straight bar over easy bar curls. Your thoughts? Mike Menser was not aware of something called the carrying angle back in the day. So if you have a narrow carrying angle, um, then you can use a straight bar. But most people, their carrying angle, and the way you test your carrying angle is very simple. You just stand up. So this is how you test your carrying angle. Stand up, put your hands by your side. Notice the distance between your hand and your hip. This is your carrying angle. If there's a lot of distance, so supinate your palm, stick it out to the side, if there's a lot of distance right here, you have a poor carrying angle, in which case a straight bar curl is going to be very uncomfortable on your joints. If you bend your arms down and your hand is like this comfortably, then you have a narrow carrying angle and you'd be able to use a straight bar. Mike Menser wasn't aware of this, which is why he said the straight bar is most effective because it fully supinates the bicep, it was wrong. Because he just didn't understand carrying angles back then. I don't think anybody did. Should you do a vacuum? No. All right, let's see. How do you feel about a split? Doran uses about four to eight sets to failure her body part once per week. You know, it works for him. He probably, here's the thing. Doreen Yates was on a huge amount of steroids. So, he could tolerate and benefit from more volume. He could push it a little further. You cannot. You can't. So you guys need to realize you need to understand the significant the significance of anabolic steroids. They increase your tolerance and they increase your rate of recovery. And you're going to just, you're going to get more out of pushing, pushing the needle a little further. You can't fucking do what pro bodybuilders do. You're not a pro bodybuilder. If I were to train a pro bodybuilder, his workout would probably look a little different than mine. His workout would definitely look different than, you know, average, you know, 28 year old Joe who works as a computer programmer. This is a so, such a different fucking case. Such a different case. All right, let's look at a little more.
Do not copy the volume and frequencies of professional bodybuilders. You're not on steroids. You're not a professional bodybuilder. You're an average fucking dude. So train like an average dude. Training like a non-average dude is not going to make you an above average dude. <laughs> like that's what people think like, oh, well, Michael Jordan did this, this, and this, and LeBron James did this, this, and this. So if I emulate them, I'll become like them. No, you fucking won't. That's a pile of horseshit, feel good, rah-rah fucking nonsense. All right. Use your brain. You need to go about this logically. You stop going about it with your emotions. All right. Just because you see Dorian Yates, you're like, I'm going to be Mr. Olympia one day, so I'm going to train just like Dorian Yates. No, no. And there's another bodybuilding documentary I want to go over that I was watching last night with Tom Platts. And (laughs) the way these bodybuilders used to look at bodybuilding was just like fucking weird. Like Tom Platts was saying, he was saying, you know, I'm really into emotions and I like to express myself in the gym and You know, I have a love affair with the gym. I have a love affair with my car. And, of course, a love affair with my lady, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, what the fuck is this guy talking about? Like, weird, weird shit. Um, (laughs) So if you're following, especially some of these older, old school bodybuilders, they're like fucking crazy. It must be like the trend going in their head or something. Keep in mind, trend will fuck you up mentally. Oh, here we go. Nautilus biceps curls. Slow. All right, ready? All right, let's go. Courtesy of Mike Mentor. Mike Mentor talking this shit. Yeah. Old school, chain driven. Pull and squeeze. What if I just put it whenever? You could like see the friction in this though. If you're going to do this, do it a lot slower. He tore a biceps tendon. Come on, squeeze it now. Probably because he was overtraining too. Let's go again. Let's go again. Reps. Let's go Guys, if you have a training partner to help you do these force reps on biceps, you're going to see nasty growth. Trust me. You can even do it yourself. Curl with one arm. Assist yourself. Do the negative. Assist yourself. Do the negative. If you guys are having a hard time growing your biceps and triceps, doing force reps can help you because chances are you're just not training them hard enough. And doing some force reps and getting the negative – is going to help generate a deeper, more significant yes. stimulus. Let's get nasty now. Finish it off. Good. Full contraction. Squeeze it to the top. You guys see the cam on this? So notice how the cam is the flattest in the in midway through the contracted position. Since that cam is flatter, it's going to add more resistance to the biceps. Now, when we fully extend, you can tell the cam is a little, the angle, the roundness is a little more drastic. And this is what drops off the load. See right here? It went from a flatter cam to a more curved cam. The deeper the curve, the more it's going to drop off that resistance. The flatter the curve, the more resistance it's going to add. This is why Nautilus equipment is so fucking good. Because when he reaches failure, so most exercises, most machines do not vary the resistance throughout the range of motion like this does. So a lot of the times people will come down and get stuck down here and think they reached failure, but you didn't. You encountered a mechanical sticking point. If the resistance appropriately drops off in the extended position and then appropriately increases towards 90 degrees of elbow flexion, you're going to reach failure at 90 degrees of elbow flexion, which will be true failure, which is why these machines were designed. Is that flyer there? More curved at the bottom. Bring it in. Let's go. Arthur Jones, inventor of Nautilus, came up with the cam. So you'll notice he's not going to fail in the extended position. He's going to fail in the middle because the resistance varies appropriately. In accordance with the strength oh, curve of the biceps. See that? He doesn't get stuck in the extended position. In most biceps exercises, you will because they're made like fucking shit. That's why, in best case scenario, you want to use uh you want to use Nautilus. And that's it. It's this whole workout. <laughs> so he did he did a incline bench press, hammer strength chest press, 
incline fly, chest fly, dumbbell biceps, barbell biceps, nautilus biceps. So we did six exercises. I think about half of the exercises, he did a warm up set or a practice set or two. So he was still at about probably 15 sets for the entire workout. Most people do <laughs> three sets of uh, probably, let's see. Most people do about 12 sets per body part. He did 15 sets for the whole workout. So significantly less volume than most people. Let's see. Just did a full body one set to absolute failure. I've never been so sore with so little time in the gym. <laughs> yeah, no shit. I did my leg workout last night. So I decided a couple things. First of all, I decided to structure my workouts at night. And this is a good idea for you guys, too, if you want to optimize recovery. It makes sense to train, eat your meal, and go to bed shortly after. Because a lot of your recovery is happening while you sleep. So I've been structuring my workouts at about 7 p.m. now, and it's way better. So last night I did my leg workout, which consisted of one practice set of squats, one set of squats to failure, a set of leg extension to failure, and a set of heel raises to failure. Three exercises, four sets, okay? I was fucking dead, and I still am having trouble walking up down the stairs today. So you don't need a whole lot. Second of all... um. I started to do what I kind of started to diet. Hold on one second. I need a so my normal diet is, you know, like one, maybe two meals a day. I'll eat like a, a pound of ground turkey um, or just an entire pre-made rotisserie chicken. That's how I get most of my protein. And then my second meal of the day, dinner, or whatever, just be kind of whatever, maybe like a Reuben sandwich or a chicken sub or something, whatever. Usually the only breakfast. Well, yesterday I started a new diet. And what I'm doing is <laughs> eating way more protein than just actually eating three meals a day. For, and I, I'm filming some of this too to show you. And I recommend you try it. For breakfast, I ate about nine ounces of ground turkey. So I get a pound of ground turkey, cook it all. I give Ace some, and I eat about nine ounces. Plus, um, I think it's about 240 grams of rice. Just in the, the Uncle Ben's packet, put it in the microwave for 90 seconds. So I ate about 240 grams of rice, um, nine ounces of ground turkey, 85% lean. Did that for breakfast. 10 a.m. 2 p.m. I had a pre-made chicken, rotisserie chicken. Ate all the breasts. It was probably about 10 ounces of chicken. Another bag of rice. Dinner. One pound of ground turkey. Another bag of rice. So I'm going to do that three times a day now. Um, and I already <laughs> feel my clothes are way tighter. And I've done this for about a day and a half. So if you guys are having a hard time growing mass, I'm going to do a video kind of showing this diet approach I'm using if you're a hard gainer. Um, and it works. You know, three meals uh, with that kind of protein each one, you're going to nail your protein requirement. I had no snacks, no shakes, no nothing in between. So you guys will probably notice a pretty decent change in my physique once I start to actually diet. And... Um, because I kind of want to, because in all honesty, I don't really diet. I mean, I have good genetics and I've been training for a long time. So, you know, the diet isn't as important to me as it is for most people. But I'm going to show you, once I do diet, the significant effect it has. What are your thoughts on Dave Palumbo's training and supplementation advice? I have no idea. You guys need to remember, I don't watch 
all of the fitness bodybuilding people. I watched pretty much none of them. All right. Why not eat ground beef or bison? Nothing pasture-raised, grass-fed, organic. Yeah, I do eat organic ground beef here and there. I actually, I was eating organic ground beef for weeks, and I'm just fucking sick of it. That's the only reason I stopped. Uh, I literally stopped eating grass-fed ground beef this week. I was eating it for probably two months. Sick of it. Um, I threw ground bison in there, too. I like ground bison. Pretty gamey, but I like it. So, yeah, I'll eat those, too. Yeah, why not? Um, turkey... It seems turkey has more protein per ounce, though, um, compared to ground beef and ground bison. Well, ground bison is very lean. Ground beef, though, it's not very lean, so you're not getting as much bang for the buck in terms of protein. But, yeah, I eat those, too. I don't really care. All right, we're going to watch. We'll go, like, 10 more minutes. We'll watch a little bit of his leg training and uh, see what we can find here. Yeah, that's way too fast, guys. Don't do that. He's just kind of getting ready here. See the cam at the bottom? Look at that. Drops the resistance off when you're extended. What's he doing? Is this like a... Oh, so he goes through every exercise for one set. All right. Well, this is, I mean, this is not a terrible idea. He goes through every exercise he's going to do, hamstring curl, leg press, and leg extension. One set, probably about 50% of his working load as a warm-up as practice sets. And then he goes through it for a set to failure. Not a bad idea. So this one's he's probably going to murder it. It's too quick, though. It's way too quick. I don't like that. He's still, it looks like he's still warming up. Okay. Here we go. This looks like it's going to be the failure set. Too fast though. Don't do it that fast. Kind of use the weight stack set back into the wall. That's pretty fucking cool. That's a good idea, dude. Save space. And he's still not doing a set to failure. I don't know what he's doing. It's almost like he's kind of it's kind of like he's doing the Delorme Watkins, like fifty percent of working load, seventy five percent of working load, then set to failure. You know, the first two sets are completely unnecessary; you don't need to do them. But if it's a psychological thing, whatever. I was doing a whole fucking set. Oh, he's still not there. We got to add even more weight. Jesus Christ! This is the real set, man. Well, this looks like it might be it. All those sets beforehand are completely unnecessary. Completely. I mean, maybe one set to get synovial fluid into the joint. Not a, I mean, not a bad idea. Um, but you don't need to do three sets before the set to failure. Squeeze the oh, come on. Squeeze it. I said it's wrong. Oh. Yes. Squeeze. Oh. Let's go again. Come on. Here we go. Still too so long. Come on. Bring it up. Let's do one. Oh. Got more. Come on. Squeeze it. Oh. We can do another. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. That's fucking yeah. failure right there. That's it. Honestly, he needed one warm-up set and just one of those. He, he did more than he needed to. Maybe he's throwing up now. 
Alright. What are we doing? Do a leg press now? I hate this fucking leg press. This is that 45 degree leg press. It's a piece of shit. Very popular back in these days. Wouldn't do it. Yeah, that's a real thing. I love how he spits up the leg press. And I've used this exact leg press at my... So the gym I grew up at had all this equipment, old school Nautilus, old school Cybex. We had this this leg press. I've used it. I hate it. Come on, shoulder. See, the problem is, like, here's the thing. He's so big that he's really not going to be able to get any sort of knee flexion or any sort of range on this. Not that you need a whole lot of range, but... When you're not using a long range of motion in a piece of equipment like this, you're gonna have to load the fuck out of the out of the weight in order to make it relatively challenging because you're basically working the muscle in positions where it has a mechanical advantage, where it has better leverage, which means you're gonna have to use more load. You don't necessarily want to use more load because it could be harder on the joints. Yes. Oh, he still goes back pretty fucking far, though. You don't want to lock your knees out either. Dangerous. There's a lot of momentum there. I would not do it like that. He's locking his knees. Yeah, I would not do it like that. Yeah, not really. I'm not really impressed with his his approach to leg training. Plus, it's going to be difficult to reach real failure on this machine because it's really not going to adjust the resistance based on the, the strength curve. Let's hate this machine. If you're leaning back a lot more, maybe, but. If you guys do leg press like this, you're probably going to hear it. I wouldn't. Let's get to his failure set. Must be it. <laughs> I'm going. Drive. Drive. Yeah, you don't want to be locking your knees up. It's just not. Yeah, it's not necessarily a failure. Well, you can't really reach failure on this. What are you gonna do? Drop the weight and crush your knees. Next squat. Right, let's see. We got back training here. His his leg training's pretty pretty messy. Not gonna lie. This. Yeah. Girls. Ooh, here we go. That's rock and roll. Back day, you do the pull over. Get in there. Hey, oh, let's see it then. Pull it and squeeze. Ooh. Yeah, squeeze that mighty back. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, it's a little too fast. Ooh. Load it up. Mm. 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 Mm
Mass on the back now. <laughs> His training partner's fucking nuts. What a time. Hunt. In there. Mighty pullovers. That's the way. That's the way. Squeeze it in. Yeah. Oh, nice. Right. Yeah. Right. That's the way. And yeah, hold it up. Yeah. <clears throat> what are you doing, man? Come on. So as you can see, guys, <sighs> Dorian Yates is not doing any fancy it's shit. <laughs> You know, there's a lot of people who you got to work this side of the biceps, that side of the biceps. How do you work the long head of the triceps or the ladder, blah, 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 blah. Fucking bullshit. Dorian Yates never worked different heads of a fucking muscle. Basic movements done with a high level of intensity. All you need. You know, all this bodybuilding nonsense out there saying that you need all these different exercises of different angles. To get the most muscle growth out of a muscle is wrong. Although this is an anecdote, Dorian Yates never did any special exercise or anything fancy at all. He's probably going to do a pullover, a row, a pull down, basic ass exercises. You don't need all this crazy shit. You know, you see, you, you see these bodybuilders like focusing on. <laughs> like they're doing rows, like focusing on contracting one part of the muscle. You don't need to do that shit. It's stupid. I saw someone in the saw someone in the gym the other day. He like took a handle. It was like a hammer strength pull down machine. He took one of those um, nylon handles, nylon, whatever, the one you put on the pull downs. Hooked it around another handle. Sat on the ground and did a row with it. It's just like, dude, you're such a fucking idiot. Use the machine as it's designed. Don't like bring another handle in and like go outside of the machine. Oh, I should have filmed it because it's so stupid. Like when these people do dumb shit, I just stick my phone right in their fucking face and film them. I want them to see me because I want them to feel stupid because the shit needs to stop. Um, but Dorian Yates built a six time Mr. Olympia winning physique doing basic exercises like. For his back day, he'll probably do four. <laughs> you know? Like, you don't need all these different stupid-ass exercises. Now, a client of mine texted me today and, uh, and said, a client of mine in my VIP coaching group, by the way, if you want my personal coaching and personal guidance, uh, join my VIP coaching program. Um, I give you my cell phone number. You can text me any questions you have. Um I just kind of guide you personally. I'm just like in your pocket. So my client texted me this morning asking me, other than a biceps barbell curl, what other curls should I do? And my response was, no other curls. If you're addressing the function of a muscle, you don't need to do 10 different types of curls. You just need to do a curl. You don't need to do all these different exercises. Complete utter nonsense. <laughs> And if you need proof you don't need to do these different exercises, then look at Dorian Yates. Won the Mr. Olympia six times, one of the biggest bodybuilders of all time. Basic compound movements, just basic traditional single joint single movements. Look at the cam on this, by the way. See that big shell, Nautilus shell looking thing? That's what's changing the resistance throughout the range of motion. That is why you cannot do this exercise on a cable or with a dumbbell. Because it does not... See how it gets heavier towards the bottom? It's going to get lighter here. See? Where it gets flatter, it gets heavier. That's where it's the heaviest. And then it's going to drop off again. See? See right here where the curve is more drastic? Because when you, when you come closer into elbow extension... You're weaker. You're the strongest in the middle of a of a pullover. That's why the cam is the flattest in the middle. The flatter the part of the cam, the more resistance it adds. 
the more drastic the curve, like you see here, the more resistance drops off. So you could also see uh, in the extended position. Let me see if we can get there. Oop. You could see in the extended position how the curve is much more exaggerated. All right, so it does pull over to failure. This is kind of, he does the pull down after. Oh, this is the machine the guy was using. The guy fucking, oh my God. So the guy, <laughs> the guy in the gym took one of those, um, like those, what is it, nylon, right? Nylon, the, the nylon handle you connect to the, the uh, cable machines. He took one of those handles. He wrapped it around one of these handles. So see the, the handle and Dorian's right hand, right? He wraps it around there, kneels next to the machine with the other handle wrapped around the handle in Dorian's right hand and rows it with his left hand. What the fuck is wrong with these people? Why? He probably wanted attention because he's a beta male bitch. That's the thing I noticed about the gym. It's just like a bunch of dudes with their Jack Harlow haircut, their short shorts with no quads, just doing shit to get attention. It's like, dude, be a fucking man. Be a shadow. Get your fucking work done. Do it in silence. Do it without dying for recognition from everybody. Just get your fucking work done. It's just like. That's the problem with these commercial gyms. Everybody needs to be seen. Everybody wants to be admired. Well, you're not going to be admired because chances are you're a fucking loser. So just go work out, get back to your life. I mean, that's why you see so much crazy shit in the gym. That's why you see some woman doing a fucking handstand on a functional training cage tower thing. Oh, God. It's just people's starvation for attention and admiration. It's just nausea. But... Regardless, this is a fucking awesome machine. I use this machine as part of my training. Um, if you're in any kind of decent gym, they will likely have this machine. Notice how this machine allows you to work with your palms supinated. Notice they're not mm, fully supinated, like Mike Menser said. Why? Because hammer strength came out a little after Mike Menser and realized what carrying ankle was so they are slightly supinated not all the way but slightly why are they supinated why aren't they like this even though they do make a machine like that well they're supinated because you put your biceps in a con in a contracted position and you get more contractile force out of your biceps therefore you're not doing the whole movement with the weaker elbow flexor in a pro pronated position when your hand is pronated your brachialis and brachioradialis are working as elbow flexors when your palm is supinated, the stronger biceps muscle is working as your elbow flexor. So the problem with doing an overhand or pronated pull down is that your uh, brachialis and brachioradialis are going to are going to fail out way before your back muscles do. But if you're doing supinated, they won't. So that's why the machine was designed this way. Although hammer strength does design pronated grip version of this it's, it's completely useless honestly they probably just do it because people like it you know. it is a business yeah at this point he's so strong <laughs> that his grip strength is probably never going to catch up to how strong his back muscles are. So using wraps. Yeah. That's it. What's he doing? Four fucking plates. Ooh. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Trapped. Oh. So this is pretty good. This is decent for him. Contract and hold. Ease out. That's it. Bring it in. Yes. That's a little better. Dorian Yates' leg form sucks. This is pretty good. Though. We're going to get some assisted reps. You can use a gym partner to help you with this shit if you really want to get it done. He's got more. Yeah. 
I'd have him contract, 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 hold, hold, five seconds, hold, four, hold, three. I'd have him hold it there for like five seconds and really push him. All right, so that's his one set to failure. What's going to next? I'm going to do a row. So he's got the lats done. Uh, this is kind of a lat exercise, too. I mean, obviously, it's going to work out. Trapezius around here, too. Let's see. All right, one thing I don't like. There's no reason ever at all to do a unilateral exercise. There's no reason to do one arm at a time. Maybe he was doing one arm at a time so that way he could get forced reps from his training partner. But unless that's the case, there's no benefit at all whatsoever to doing one-armed rows versus two. If you do a row with both arms, you're going to get a bigger overall stress, bigger overall stimulus. The weight, your spine, and your shoulders are going to be evenly loaded, which is going to reduce the chance of injury. And it's going to be more efficient. You can train both sides at the same time. Unless the training partner, unless they're doing this for the sake of the training par partner helping with negatives and helping with force reps, there's no reason to ever do one arm at a time. Like these assholes in the gym, just because a hammer strength moves unilaterally, most hammer strength equipment moves unilaterally one arm at a time, does not mean it's designed to be used with one arm at a time. All right. Quite the opposite, actually. Yeah. Just use both arms at a time. I don't know why people Ooh, think God. there's any fucking benefit to doing one arm at a time. Ooh. The only Ooh. reason Ooh. I can think there is a benefit here is because the training partner is going to help. Again. In Whoa. which the training partner can't fucking, <laughs> you know, get on the floor and push up these hands. It would be very difficult for him to do it. It would be a lot easier to put all of his effort into one hand, which is very likely the reason they're doing it. Reverse delt fly. Man, I have not seen this machine in a long time. This is a chess fly machine that they're using. Or maybe it might be a reverse delt machine. No, that's a. Really don't need to do uh, rear delt training either. Where's the other set of him doing? Oh. That's it. Oh, yes. Come on. Point That's it. Let's go. Point it in, guys. That's you. Let's go again. One more. One more. One more. What a mass. Oh, yeah. You can see he's lifting at the bottom. Okay. So, yeah, that, that makes sense. So, the reason he's doing one arm at a time is you could. If you can notice his training partner, let me see if I can pause it and we can see. His training partner is lifting the weight at the bottom to give him assisted reps. So it makes sense. See right here? He's pulling up on the weight at the bottom to give him assisted reps. So that makes sense. If you want to push, you know, if you want to get a little more intensity out of the exercise, I mean, you're not going to be able to stand in front while he's holding two handles and fucking give him assistance. You, you're not going to be able to help at all. But in this case, being on one side, lifting from the bottom, he's able to help. That makes sense. Are you doing lumbar extension? Squeeze back. <laughs> yeah. That's an interesting way to do it. Still there. Wow. Still right. there, Knight. Squeeze it. So that's the whole that's the whole back workout. Does he do a row? And he finishes off with a set of road to failure. Oh no, that looks to failure. Alright, yeah. I mean He's, uh, he's kind of doing the deadlift 
is a lumbar yes. extension exercise to work with lower back. Yes. He's just doing lumbar extensions. With, it's not even really a deadlift, just like lumbar extension. Man, he must feel like shit after this. <laughs> I know I would. Anyway, so that's a breakdown during Yates blood and guts training. You know, it's good for the most part. The repetitions are a little fast. Some of the things he's doing don't really make any sense. Like you really don't need four, war three warm-up sets or practice sets before a set of knee extension. Maybe he's doing it that way to properly warm up his knee joint and get more synovial fluid into it. Maybe he's got knee problems. But if you have healthy knees, maybe one practice set beforehand um, might be a better idea if you do have bad knees to do – you know, multiple sets before you're set to failure just to get enough lubrication and synovial fluid into the joint. But if you're healthy, you, you don't need to do that many. Um, take away from this, no need to do unilateral one-armed exercises unless you have a training partner and they're going to help you with four reps or negatives, in which case he did. Um, what else? Oh, Matt Green. Um, one more time. How to join your private coach. Matt, you could just shoot me an email. Um, let me, I'm going to put the link in the comments. One second. So my private coaching is 12 weeks. Um, I'm basically your best friend for 12 weeks. <laughs> um, I just, you know, I talk to my clients all day, every day. We have a private chat room, me and all my students, where we talk and share things all day, every day. So if you want you know, to learn everything about high intensity training and exercise science, go ahead, click the link I just posted there. Um, I'm going to put it. Oh, I'm going to put it in the description too. week VIP ship dash coaching. Ah, also going to be in the description. So, you know, here's the thing. A lot of you guys, if you, if you want to, get your results fast. If time is something you care about and uh, you want to get and unlock your optimal potential quickly, you're going to want to join the coaching. It's very unlikely that you will unlock your genetic potential on your own. Why? You're not an expert. If you work with me, I will unlock your genetic potential because I am an expert. So click the link in uh, the description if you want me to coach you for personally for 12 weeks. Uh, you also get lifetime access to my private chat room where you'll be able to ask questions to me for the rest of your life, which is pretty damn good. So instead of waiting for a live stream or emailing me, remember, I don't really answer emails or DMs. Um, I, I need to use my time and energy more effectively. So if you want to be able to ask me a question whenever you want, click the link in the bio for the 12 week coaching, you get lifetime access to me. All right. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Let's see. You'll be my best friend. I will be your best friend. <laughs> we'll talk about everything. Talk about if there's life on other planets or intelligent life on this planet. Okay, let's see. What would you say is the best way for someone to prefer, bleh, prepare for training such as special forces in the Army? Simple. What? Man. So <laughs> that's tough. Um, you're going to just want to do what they do in the army. So you're going to want to rock for 20 fucking miles, whatever they do. Um, you're going to want to run and run and run and run and run. Get your body, your nervous system to adapt to doing fucking long bouts of that shit. You know, for uh, to become um, a Green Beret. Uh, part of the, if you ever heard, what's it called? In in uh, Special Forces Selection to become a Green Beret. But part of it is when you, you hop off the bus, they put you in the sand pit, and you do PT for 24 hours. Burpees, push-ups, jog. If you throw up, you have to put the, you have to throw up outside of the sand pit. And if you don't, you have to put it in your pocket. There's really no way to, uh, the only way to prepare for that is just to do the movement similar to what you're going to do in special forces selection. But here's the thing about special forces selection. 
it's a weaning out process. All right. Some people, no matter how much they train for special forces selection, will not make it. You just don't have the genetics. So what they're doing in special forces selection is weaning out the people who will not fit that job role. Whether it's psychological, it's a combination of psychological, physiological, emotional. They're just weaning you out. So if for one reason or another, you just don't have the physical capacity to make it through special forces selection, you just don't. They don't care. They want the best individuals for that job. And they're going to wean out the people that don't have the characteristics they need for that job. And that's pretty much what special forces selection is. So to train for it, just do what they do. Ruck for fucking miles and miles. Do a lot of jogging, do a lot of push-ups, do a lot of burpees. Just get your body used to doing that shit, all right? And then eat really, really, really well for fucking months leading up to it. Rucking, yes, true. Oh, all right, here we go. The lats actually flex to rotate the shoulder girdle relative to the hips and to hyperextend the spine in a diagonal plane. So full flexion of one lat is not possible with bilateral movement. Good point. Somebody knows, somebody knows is fucking biomechanics here. Neither is full extension of the lats. Well, yeah, but at the same time, you need full flexion of the lats. Nah, not really. All right. Uh, one more question. Um, uh, if it's a question I've answered 10 million times, I'm just going to skip over it. You can watch old live streams um, and watch more content if you want to learn the answer to that question. But thoughts on doing power lifts once every week, plus your routine to gain skill and strength. Yeah. Probably a good idea. Yeah. If you want, if you want to develop more skill at those power lifting movements like bench press, squat, deadlift, yeah, you should, you should practice them. Probably you probably only need to once a week, but you got to practice them really heavy. Body your your, your body will adapt um, based on the rep range you choose. So if you're practicing in one to three reps, well, you're not going to be able to do as well with 12 reps. If you practice with 12 reps, you're not going to be able to move as much weight for one to three reps. Your nervous system adapts so specifically. Thank you for the super chat. Your program has changed my life. Thank you. Appreciate it. It's great someone's truly representing the hit lifestyle. Yeah, it's doing my best. Um, just trying to give you guys the right information. Um, whether or not people agree with this factual information is whatever it's their problem but i'm just the i'm just the guy presenting the information i did not come up with any of this obviously i've supervised and instructed over 20,000 workouts so there are some things that i learned and came up with along the way but the basic principles of high intensity training they've been around since the 60s i'm just talking about them that's all dorian yates dorian yates has been doing high intensity training since the 90s you know this is not, you know, it's not my training approach. It's just a training approach. <laughs> uh, let's see. I'm trying to make my routine as minimalist as I can. Do you think squat is enough for the hamstrings? No. I mean, it depends what your goal is. If your goal is optimal physique and optimal strength, you need to do a movement for the hamstrings. If your goal is just general health, you probably don't need to do something for the hamstrings. All right, one more. Does it make a difference if I do leg extensions or curls before or after leg press? I like to do leg press at the end because it puts me on the floor. No, not really. Um, you do it either way. I mean, how do I do it? Normally, I do the simple movements after the multi-joint movement. It makes the most sense. Uh, 
or may need a deadlift then and work out from home with free weights. Well, that, you know, you need a knee flexion movement that will work the hamstrings, but you also need a knee flexion movement. If you want optimal physique development, you will not get optimal physique development with optimal time efficiency. You're going to have to give up some of your physique development for more time efficiency or give up time efficiency for physique development. You do not get both, okay? Training can be very efficient, but if you want the most efficient, you're going to sacrifice physique development. If you want the most physique development, you're going to sacrifice a little bit of efficiency. You can't have both. I have a question. Is it viable to divide legs in two or three workouts? The answer to your question is, well, I found that a leg day is too demanding for my recovery ability. Well, what are you doing for your leg day, dude? <laughs> I mean, if you're doing eight exercises, what do you need for legs? Honestly, if you did a leg press or a squat, a hamstring curl, and a heel raise for your calves, that's all you need. You should be able to handle that in a full workout. So you're, you're probably just doing something wrong. All you need is those three exercises. You, you barely ever need a knee extension exercise. Personally, I don't, my personal approach is I do full body plus knee flexion, knee extension. Okay. So I do include the legs with my full body. I just don't do a hip extension movement. Then I wait three days, maybe four, whatever. And then I do the hip extension movement with calves. Um, because I can, you might not, it's tough to handle the leg, the hip extension movement with upper body once you get used to training really, really hard. So it, it kind of depends, but, um, no, there, there's no good reason ever, ever, ever to break up your leg workout into three workouts. That's fucking crazy. You're, you're doing something wrong. All right, guys. So that's it for me. If you're interested in coaching with me personally for 12 weeks, I'll teach you all this shit plus more. We go in depth. You know, we do two group calls a week. They're about two hours each. They're all recorded. So you can watch them forever. You have access to my VIP chat room where we talk all day and we discuss exercise and I give you guys tips and I just kind of guide you through everything. And then you also have access to a website with a bunch of exclusive video content teaching important concepts that I don't put on YouTube. So if you want to, um, if you want to, optimize your physique development to the best of your genetic potential. Join the VIP coaching group and let me coach you and teach you personally. The link's in the bio. If you want to go at it at your own at first, or you just simply want to do it on your own, goldenerasystem.com. I'm still giving away that home workout for absolutely free. Um, when you buy the homework, when you buy the golden era system, you're not going to get the home workout immediately after I have to go through and click and send it to everybody. And they normally do it at the end of the day. So be patient with it. You're not going to get it immediately, but you will get the hit home workout for free as well. Um, so click the link links in the bio coaching golden era system I uploaded some new videos to both of them. I'm going to be updating these programs as time goes on. And as I think of things that I want to add to them, um, but that's it for today. Um, you know, like, subscribe, hit that bell notification icon. I posted a video yesterday, uh, Joe Rogan talking about fun functional training and debunking some of the silly stuff that they said. Uh, so check that out too. All right, guys. Um, see you in a couple of days. Do another live stream soon. And if you haven't already, check out the training programs.